After her parents have her living a sheltered life, a naive woman with a vivid imagination moves to Paris and works in a cafe. Little does she know that her interactions with her customers bring magic into their lives, and by helping her customers, she is put on a path to find love. Wes and Darling B take in this surprise French hit, nominated for five Academy Awards in Amelie, on View the Right Thing. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, welcome back to another episode of View the Right Thing. I'm Wes, and with me, as most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> Starling Beat. Say hi, Beat. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How, how, how about you? Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh. I don't know. I've been off for a while for 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 a little bit, but just just felt a little strange. But I think I'm okay. I'm not sick or anything. Just off. You got the brain fogs. Yeah, kind of, kind of do. Uh, any uh, any exciting news going on in in your in your world since last we spoke? No, same old, same old. I'm gonna I'm gonna date our recording of this. Uh, tomorrow, the trailer for the new Evil Dead movie comes out. I know you're super excited. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what it is because it seems like it's going to be a complete departure from the previous series. So I'm excited to see what this means. It's like they're expanding the Evil Dead universe. Yeah, I did like the poster you sent me. Yeah, the poster's cool. Uh, mommy loves you to death. Yeah, mommy loves you to death. <laughs> good times, good times. Well, I don't have much else. I mean, I, we could maybe just get into it, and this might maybe, 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 maybe this might be a short episode. Um, there's not. I mean, we can talk subtext and stuff if we want, um, but there's not a lot of like movie making factoids about this film. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, but maybe we just jump jump right into it, um, and uh, and go from there. Sound good? Yeah. So we watched Amelie. Um, it's a French film from two thousand one, uh, directed by our old friend Jean Pierre Genet. Um, so the the short plot synopsis is. And Amelie is an innocent and naive girl in Paris with her own sense of justice. She decides to help those around her and along the way discovers love. I don't love that. I don't love that uh, synopsis, but um, but there it is. Beat. I'm so afraid to just, I don't even want to ask you. Did you enjoy this film? I did not. I didn't think you did. I could. I could, I could feel it. As we were watching, I could feel it emanating off of you, which is too bad because I I really like this one. Um, I texted Des as soon as we got done. I said, I don't think Beat, I think Beat did not like this film. Uh, she was like, oh, no, because uh, this is one of Desi's favorites. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, it's uh-huh. a it's a it's a pretty, pretty, you know, acclaimed film. It was nominated for um, five Oscars, including Best Foreign Film. Um so you know, it was it was pretty pretty well loved when it came out. Um, it uh, on I'm just looking at the aggregate score on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Eighty nine percent from critics, ninety five percent from audience scores. Um, so you okay. know, so but you know, not every movie is for everyone. You know, that was correct. Well, I'm sorry to poop on Desi's movie. Yeah, well, when she listens to this, she's she's going to have a vendetta against you. Oh, no. So, t- tell me about this movie. Did you did you take any notes? Um, I did take notes. Um my notes were more along like the whole plot, like what's going on and stuff. I sure. didn't really have any like my only critiques were just some of the acting kind of got on my nerves. How come? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like it was a little... Some of it was a little over-exaggerated. And then some of it was okay. I, I did like the guy from the, the Lost City. Oh, yeah. The 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 surly... The... 
uh, I don't know how to explain him. The guy with the tape recorder. Yeah, I thought he was really funny. Yeah. I liked it's everybody really in it. I like Amelie. I like Audrey Tuteau. Oh, she's so yeah. adorable. Yeah, I do like her. I liked her look and her character and how she played it. I thought that was really well. I didn't like her her love interest. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a reason why? No. You didn't think they were a good fit or you just... I don't know. I felt like his character was, was boring. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, one of the things that I really like about the movie is um, how it sort of, you know, deals it deals with these themes. But the the big one that I like is this sort of like um, compassion versus loneliness. This sort of, um, I guess, not a discussion, but a sort of a, an exploration of. Um, uh, how it's kind of like this thing that you that you've brought up multiple times but we've kind of like i think we've kind of adopted this a little bit in in a lot of our episodes but you know, you're you know you talk about like hurt people hurt and then we're like well how do you say like kind people kind but that's kind of what's happening right like you know these people are all every single one of these these characters is is lonely in their own way and mm -hmm. it's through her empathy and her compassion towards them that um that helps uh, alleviate See, that loneliness but i don't think she was empathetic or compassionate i think she just wanted to distract herself from her own life i think so and i i think that's i think that's part of it like i think like uh the grocer the grocery guy and the boy uh what's his name lucian lucian uh, i felt like she just got mad because he was bullying him but, you know, the lonely woman, I felt like she just wanted to do that to do it. Well, I mean, it, to, it all... For her own sense of pride. It all stemmed from from her getting that reaction from the guy um, and seeing, like, how much it meant to him, right? Like, she could have she could have taken... You know, she, she delivered the, the, the box full of mementos to the guy in the phone booth at the beginning. And she mm -hmm. could have taken that. If it was just a matter of, like, accomplishing something for herself, then job done right but it goes a step further where she actually hears him talk about um how important it, it was and yeah and and she got a glimpse into the the idea that it was going to better his future right like mm -hmm. like he was going to contact his daughter who he hadn't talked to in a long time and maybe meet his grandson which we later learned that he does so i th i think the motivation isn't i think you're partially right that i think she's they talk about the girl with the glass in the painting and that it's obviously meant to symbolize her and how she's sort of on the other side of the glass, mm -hmm. like watching everybody else and not, um, not taking care of her own life or not really living herself. She's like, you know, imagining everyone else's lives. And, um, so I think there is some aspect of it where it's like, yeah, she's doing it to sort of like, live without having to live. Um, but I, but I don't think that's the sole motivation. I think there, there is very much a motivation of, of being empathetic and, and to the point about the grocer, I don't think she would have done the thing she did to the grocer. If she wasn't empathetic towards, towards, uh, Lucien, mm -hmm. you know, and I she felt like she was just trying to be manipulative of other people's lives hmm. because how, you know, who is she to say that, um, the recorder man and the cigarette lady were a perfect match, you know. I don't think. Together, I don't think. You know? she, I don't think she was. I think she was. I think she was. So what I took from that is that she, um, had an opportunity to try and 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 That's match the make. Well, and, and yeah. match make. And I, I don't. I don't know that she was like, oh, these are the perfect match for each other. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's a match for that guy, but. Um, so I don't I don't think I felt like that was her going this is the perfect situation because it's still it's still messy in the end um even the Yeah and that's what I feel like she was sticking her nose in other people's business that Yeah like, I mean it I, didn't need to be that I guess because now she, like in the end if if they have a horrible breakup something that this man does daily which is go to this this coffee shop and she works there now they have a 
kind of like a toward love affair where it's they didn't end so well but isn't the point isn't the point though to put yourself out there and try rather than to just do nothing you know like that's that's what they're that's the lesson that she's that she's being told trying trying to be told by especially the um the guy who lives across the way or whatever that that has the yeah. video cameras is that you know she has to put herself out there like she has to stop being the the girl in the gla- girl behind the glass and mm-hmm. and i think that's sort of the point is like it's not going to always be clean it's not always going to be easy and perfect um you know it's uh i mean it's not a fairy tale like her mother dies at the beginning because somebody else committed suicide you know okay. um it's 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 not perfect but um like i like i don't think she ever solves anything with the grocer necessarily but maybe she makes lucian's life a little bit more pleasant f- uh, you know occasionally from day to day um yeah you know her father you know it, he he hasn't solved all of his issues but he he at the end of the movie he goes out to see the world if it wasn't for her intervention he wouldn't have right so I mm-hmm. don't know. I, I, I think, um, kind of like a hit or miss. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like, the point was to try then, then rather than just sit on your hands and do nothing. She, she definitely helped the new boyfriend, um, with his like quest to figure out who the guy in the photographs was, which I think was kind of a genius resolution to that. Um, yeah, that was cool. So I don't, I don't know. That's, that's kind of, where I fell on all that. Yes, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. Um, I think she was. You think she, You think she's just selfish? Yeah, I thought she was just selfish. She's so cynical. I am. <laughs> You're not always this cynical. I don't know. Maybe I'm in a mood today. I I think I think that this director is not a director for you. Uh, we've we've you we're zero and two for you with this with this guy. Oh yeah, true. And there is there is something a little dated about this film as well. You know, the City of Lost Children definitely felt dated to the '90s, and this has got mm-hmm. uh, you know a very similar feel. Although, although, I guess it's similar feel, but not similar in tone. You know, City of Lost Children is very dark and dirty, and this is sort of the exact opposite. It's very colorful and very yeah. clean. I don't know how much you noticed about like how clean things were, if that like stuck out to you, but you know, even the train station, the floors are like shining on the platforms. Like it's, it's, they, they went through and had a crew go in and and just absolutely scrub and scour every location before they shot there to make sure everything was clean. Cause they wanted it to feel kind of magical and not like a real, not like the real Paris. What are you trying to say about the real Paris? I mean, just like any city, it's dirty and <laughs> graffiti and and grime and stuff. Matter of fact, the only sure. time you the only time you really see any dirt is when they specifically show like somebody sweeping. You know, like when they're sweeping. Like it's so funny because the the train station is completely devoid of any dirt or anything in most of the shots. But then there's a couple shots where they show somebody like sweeping stuff up on the on the ground. And there's like all sorts of dirt and dust and stuff, so uh, that's kind of silly and interesting to me. I did have a question. Yeah. Um, when she was in the movie theater and she was she was saying that she likes to watch the people's face during the movie. Mm-hmm. What does she mean by that? I think she. I think the idea is that she's she doesn't get as much entertainment from the fake world that she gets more entertainment from like, you know, it's kind of like going back to, um, uh, seeing the guy receive the box, the tin box full of mementos, um, that the expressions that people, whether it's joy or, or sadness or whatever, um, that seeing that happen, um, was something she enjoyed more than, being sucked into a story. Okay. I did like her sense of, uh, sense of justice though. Yeah. I loved her revenge. Yeah. Just slowly making that guy um, feel like he was going crazy. Yeah. On him as well as the neighbor in the very beginning as a child. Oh yeah. Yeah. Unplugging and plugging in that. Yeah. That kid was pretty cute too. 
Yeah, she was, she was. I, I thought that was really funny. I love how her, you know, the way she got revenge did not change, even though she had grown older. It was very maniacal, like, you don't have to see me get this revenge, but I'm going to get it. Yeah. You know, I, I know a secret. Yeah. You know, the um, the gnome in this movie uh, was uh, was donated to, I think, the cafe that they shot in, and then somebody stole it. Oh, no. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, I did like how... Um, I didn't like how she received... Mine I received... I didn't like how she reacted because I know she was upset and she was running up the stairs. But the widow was like, I got a letter. It's from him. And then, like, she just ignored her and kept running up the stairs. Yeah. It made me so mad. I wanted her to be happy for her because she had literally just did that, you know. Well, and I think that... Manipulatively. <laughs> and I think that goes to sort of my, my point earlier about how I don't think she's doing it for her because that's a moment where instead of instead of engaging in the happiness of the people, she does look inward and she does focus only on herself and how she feels. Right. Like if it was, if it was about her and just manipulating people, then she would have, ta- she would have gotten joy out of that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And she would have, she would have checked in on that no matter what, but because she had a, a whole other thing going on in her brain that was affecting her directly. Um, she she couldn't engage with that i'm trying to i'm trying to word this right but i hope i hope that made sense <laughs> it did it did um i did love mr mr glass man with the guy that was painting yeah, yeah i enjoyed his role in it about like you know making herself reflect on her like yeah what she was doing and his video to her is very poignant feels feels very meaningful yeah i did like that that was weird oh that's why he asked him does he have a key yeah (laughs) i just realized why he asked him that uh i like uh i also liked the the dad who was supposedly senile who kept punching tickets in the in the leaves Mm-hmm. I did. I felt so bad when he was like, "That's his name," and then she comes back and goes, "Oh, this is his name. It's the yeah. same name he gave." Yeah. <sighs> um, just checking off what I've already stated. Sure. <laughs> One of my notes says, "Why did she make a puzzle to get to her?" And I realized it was so she could get away. I was like, what a jerk, making him run all the way up there. Oh, yeah. I liked that. I liked uh, that mm-hmm. she that that she had set all these pieces into motion, you know. It was very cute. Including the small child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I did say her imagination is wild. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> I did like those scenes where they animated little weird objects and the fish and the was it a crocodile? The imaginary friend crocodile? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that guy. I like him. And the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the pig cool. the pig lamp that talks. Ah, yes. <laughs> um the uh the horse race, the the horse racing the bikes was an actual race, an actual thing that happened. It wasn't the Tour de France, but um but that escaping horse galloping along a bunch of bike riders is something that actually happened in uh, 1997, which I think is kind of... Are you talking about the flashback for the kid? Or no, the no, no, no. When, when she records, the first recording she gives to um, the glass man uh. is there's like a horse escapes like a yard and is running with the with all the bike riders. You don't remember that? <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. So I just was pointing out that that was actually a real... A real thing. The the footage is real. They didn't shoot it for the movie. What did the... Um, 
What was it? Lip neck, lip neck eye kiss mean. Hmm. I don't know. I just think it was like just playful. Like it was like. It's very weird. Kind of going there, but not really going there. It's very like kind of innocent. You know, these are both both people who um, neither of which had much of a social life um, as children. You know, they grew up lonely. And so I think it's just sort of kind of a childlike, playful thing. I mean, it's, you know, it's no James Bond licking the blood off of a... Ugh. <laughs> Such a weird scene. Um, so what would you say yeah. if I said mm-hmm. I have no more notes? Uh, I would say we're going to have a short episode. You know, I, I, I was kind of feeling that with it. Just You can just like, I don't know, man. I really could feel it from you. I was like, you know, what part of it is, is um, I didn't hear you at all. And normally I hear you like laugh at something or you say something or whatever. And even a couple times during a movie and just absolutely nothing. And I was like, oh, she's bored. And this is not going to this is not going to be a movie for her. But yeah, I was trying so hard just to to concentrate. Yeah. Like on what was happening. And I was like, oh, God. And I had to read in French. Oh, Oh, well, I I had to read in English. (laughs) I know. I know. I'm I'm worried. I'm worried because. We may have an Italian film coming up oh, here. Oh, goodness. So... It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Get, oh, my goodness. Are you going to be able to... Are you going to be able to stand it? What if I told you I'll that... Try. What if I told you it was the next movie? Oh. As long as it's not the same... It's the same director. It's not. It's not. We'll get there in a minute, though. Um, okay. Uh... Ch- 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 Oh, outside of the phone call um, that she, when she um, calls him, calls Nino on the phone, Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, they never say a line to each other in the movie. They don't actually speak to each other in the film. How crazy is that? It's so weird. And she literally shushed him. Mm. Yeah, true, true, true. Uh, I'm trying to think. The only other, only other thing I really have is, is you know, sh- sh- the skipping stones thing. Um, she couldn't, she couldn't do that in real life. So, I don't know. I don't know how interesting that is. Um, you know, if, if we want to like get into subtext, maybe maybe pad out the episode a little bit more. We could talk a little bit about like, um, like the hero's journey, um, which is a you know a pretty common um, like arc uh especially in film um so you know it deals with like a call to adventure right and so hers is that um lady die has died and she drops the perfume lid and it like it rolls and knocks the tile loose and she finds the thing um and then there's almost always um in these stories like a refusal to call to the call um and so in this it would sort of be like you know she she's unsure what to do with the stuff or whether or not she should do it um and then she kind of like easily gives up when when she doesn't find him um and that's sort of that uh and then there's always like meeting the mentor so the reference i was just going to make i can't make because you haven't seen star wars but um you know the hero always meets like somebody who's older and wiser and sort of like helps lead them through their journey um and then yeah yogi bear whatever his name is yoda uh, yeah no so (laughs) um uh, and then there's there's always a threshold right um so like some sort of like okay, I'm going to do this. I have to cross this line. And once I cross this line, I can't go back. Um, and, you know, for her, it's probably like the, the phone booth, right? You know, it's like putting the thing in the phone booth and then making the call to the phone booth. That's probably her threshold. Um, 
And then, you know, they always have like various challenges and sometimes they have enemies and sometimes they have friends. Um, and it's usually like kind of an ensemble of these things. And she, she really clearly has that. Um, there's always an introspective part of these stories where um, they, they call it a cave um, where like the character has to look on themselves and figure out why they're doing the thing that they're doing and like, how do they see themselves? And oftentimes they see themselves as the villain um, for Amelie. I think she probably, you know, she, I think initially sees herself like she wants to be like princess die. Like she wants to be in, you know, there's a scene um, when she's watching the news reel about her death and her funeral. And they, yeah. sh- they show her as like mother Teresa, like bathing the feet of people. Um, her, um, her cave is probably really the photo booth. Um, because that's the, that's the place where she sort of like breaks out of her shell a little bit. Like she dresses up in it and stuff and she creates puzzles for the guy and, and whatnot. So, um, so it's probably the photo booth at the, the end of the day. Like usually in these stories, the cave is a physical place. Um, and so what she realizes by like looking inward is that this guy and is that she, that's lost this photo album that she maybe has like a little bit of a crush on. Um, is maybe kind of like her that maybe she's not alone in this world and that, um, there are other people that are like her. Um, and then usually there's some sort of like big challenging thing, which they call the ordeal, um, which, uh, partially is, um, well, probably largely is, uh, not wanting to actually confront, um, Nino, like wanting to, to like feeling like she, internally wants to do this thing and and have this experience but is afraid to do it and that's probably her biggest conflict like her biggest barrier is herself um and then the glass guy um is basically like hey don't be a coward um and then the reward there's always a reward and um and then like a road back so you know the reward for her and, and the reward isn't always like the end result, right? So like for her, the reward is actually talking to him and setting a date. And so he comes to the coffee shop and then she like turns away from the reward. And so then for her as the hero, she has to like figure out a way to get back to it. Um, and that's helped by the glass man. Um, and then usually there's like, a death, either it's literal or figurative. In this case, it's figurative because Nino tracks her down and knocks on her door and she doesn't answer the door and he leaves and then she sees the video and then has this moment of regret when she looks up and Nino's not there anymore. And so, like, the resurrection is her opening the door and Nino's there, right? And then, and then sort of like a denouement would be um, them riding through the streets of Paris together and and acknowledging the viewer. Yeah, I did like the little fourth wall break. She did that a, a few times. Yeah, yeah. They do a lot of like her kind of looking at the camera. Sometimes I think it's a fourth wall break and sometimes I think it's just the direction she's looking. But um, the the way he chose to shoot her, you know, in, in theme with this movie, they shoot her very much like a portraiture. You know, like... Um, we're seeing paintings and photographs um, throughout this thing over and over and over again. And, and they, you know, they use a lot of um, solid colors um, and just kind of like straight on center her in the, in the frame and let her look forward. Um, And it doesn't hurt that she's got these like beautiful big eyes and stuff. So. So, yeah. So that's, that's, that's Amelie. I'm sorry you you didn't like it. I want okay. I forgive you. I want to cry because I feel like I let you down. No, of course not. Technically, was... technically, it was the wheel that let you down. Yeah, freaking wheel. Freaking wheel. Uh, well, do you want to know what the wheel? So, uh, do you do you want to know what the wheel says? Is the next movie now? We kind of I kind of teased it earlier. Yeah. I mean, I guess if we have to. Well, we don't have to. I guess we don't have to. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, no, no, no. Tell me, tell me. What okay. am I reading? <laughs> reading? Oh, yeah, that's right. You are reading. Um, it's a wonderful film. This is this is one. I, I kind of hinted to you that there's a movie coming up. So what I did is I spun the wheel. And because now that we have alternate episodes of the podcast, I had to spin the wheel a bunch and prep what... Like, basically schedule it out. So I, I know what's going to happen. But I promise I did spin the wheel. Um, which is how we ended up with two foreign language films in a row. Um, and this is a film that I love um, called Life is Beautiful. And it's um, by a filmmaker, an Italian filmmaker that I think is a genius. His name's Roberto Benigni. Um, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's from... 1997 so late 90s um and uh it is really really kind of special it it won three oscars and for a for a foreign film that's a big deal so um so i'm excited for you to see it if you don't like this excited to judge it if you don't like this one then we can't be friends oh god that's high stakes so much pressure all right well, then I'm going to wrap it up. We'll just call this a short one. This is a, it's a, a short one like Killer Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Till next time, Bon Cinema.